The political geography in Kansas is utterly confusing. They have election after election. Some of them the pro-slavery people vote. Some of them the others vote. But, um, but the real battle is going on in Congress. The administration, 1858, decides we're going to push this through Congress. We're going to admit Kansas as a slave state under this Lecompton Constitution, which has been approved by the voters in a referendum which the free state people did not take part in. They said it's an illegitimate referendum. It's being put forward by an illegitimate body, and we are not voting in this referendum. Um, Northern Democrats were put in a tremendous dilemma by this because it would be, you know, this was not popular in the, in the North, to say the least. And in 1858, every member of the House of Representatives is up for re-election, and many senators, like Douglas, have their seat, their terms expiring, and have to face re-election also. Um, so Douglas needs a vindication of this popular sovereignty principle if he's going to be re-elected to the Senate and run for president in 1860. So Douglas rejects, he becomes a rebel against Buchanan and, in a sense, a rebel against Southern control of the Democratic Party. And he quickly finds that this is making him more and more popular in Illinois and the North generally. This is a winning political position to stand up to the president and stand up to the South. Again, that shows you the consequences of the long agitation over slavery, that public opinion is such that even a leading Democrat, Douglas, will gain a lot more traction by attacking the South than by just going along with what the administration wants. Um, this is open revolt, which is quite unusual in this period when party loyalty in the Democratic Party is still a very powerful, um, powerful force. And Douglas brings half of the Northern Democrats in Congress with him. Half the Northern, there are about 52 Northern Democrats in Congress in, in the House. Half of them go along with Douglas. The other half uh, depend on patronage and uh, uh, other things from the administration and go along with President Buchanan. Um, so a strange alliance develops in Congress in the spring of 1858 in opposition to the Kansas, uh, uh, the Lecompton Constitution. There is the Republican Party, they're totally opposed to it. There are the Douglas Democrats. And then there's a bunch of these border state people, like Senator Crittenden of Kentucky, who just think this is wrong to kind of, that it's wrong of the administration to keep pushing this pro-slavery line in Kansas, which is a dead end. Um, nonetheless, the admission of Kansas under the Lecompton Constitution is approved by the Senate, where the Democrats have a strong majority. And remember, the South is equal in the Senate, because it's a state, to the, uh, to the North. And with the support of the strong support of the administration, it passes the Senate, but in the House, it turns out there is not going to be a majority because so many Northern Democrats go along with the Republicans against it, it cannot pass the House. Um, and um, other proposals come forward. Crittenden himself puts forward a proposal to allow a vote on an actual supervised vote on the, on just up or down on the Lecompton. Constitution. This puts Republicans in a bit of a dilemma. Everybody knows that if there's a fair vote, it will be voted down. And yet to vote for a vote, so to speak, is to endorse popular sovereignty. The position of the Republican Party is not that there should be a vote of the territory. The position of the Republican Party is slavery should not be allowed into any territory. It doesn't even matter what the majority of the residents think. This is a national issue to be determined by a national majority in Congress. Can they now vote for a proposal which, which, which in effect says, yeah, if they do vote for this Constitution, we'll let them in as a slave state? That seems to be a vibe. So everyone's in a kind of strange political dilemma here. Uh, there are fist fights in Congress. Uh, it, the whole political system is cracking up under the, under the weight or, or under the impact of this Lecompton Constitution thing. In the end, and it, it, Ashworth gives you more detail about this, in the end, a strange compromise is worked out. The initiative comes oddly from 
Alexander Stevens. Let's remember him. He's a member of Congress from Georgia, soon to be the vice president of the Confederacy, although nobody knows that, of course, at this point. But Stevens, a Whig, a conservative, uh, puts forward this kind of compromise where there will be a vote, but it won't exactly be on the Constitution. There will be a vote in Kansas on whether to accept a large land grant from the federal government. Much of the land is still held by the federal government. The federal government offers to Kansas to give them tens of thousands of acres of land to the state of Kansas for their whatever use they want. Um, but in a little footnote, if you, you can vote for the land grant, and by the way, then you also get the Lecompton Constitution, or you vote against the land grant, and then you don't get the Lecompton Constitution. So theoretically, they're voting on the land grant, but in fact, of course, they're voting on this Constitution. And eventually, that's what happens, and it is voted down in, by an enormous majority, and that is, in effect, the end of the, um, I think it was millions of acres, four million acres of land were being offered. Um, Douglas at first accepted this. Douglas said, all right, all right, it's a vote. But in fact, it wasn't really the direct popular sovereignty. Not all Northern Democrats accepted it. Um, Douglas met with his supporters, Senator Broderick of California, tough-minded guy, said to Douglas, you cannot accept this. It is not a f direct popular sovereignty. I will denounce you, sir, he said. You had better go into the street and blow your damn brains out. That's what Broderick thought he should do. <laughs> Douglas then switched and said, I'm opposed to this. But nonetheless, it passed, and the, the, the bill passed the House. Uh, Kansas voted on the land grant. They defeated it. The vote was 11,000 against and 2,000 in favor, which showed the balance of settlers. And that was, in a sense, the end of the Kansas issue. It was now clear Kansas was not going to be a slave state, despite the um, Dred Scott decision. But the elections of 1858, the congressional elections of 1858, showed the impact of this year-long this year-long battle. The Republican Party, what, what happened was the, 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 the conservative swing vote, the conservative swing vote swung over to the Republican Party because of disgust over the Buchanan administration and the Lecompton affair. The Republicans swept Pennsylvania, Indiana, Almost won. Douglas, we'll see next week, of course, but Douglas came within a whisker of losing in Illinois. In other words, the, 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 the question of what was going to happen to those Fillmore voters was decided by the Lecompton controversy. They cast their lot with the Republican Party because of anger at what the Buchanan administration had tried to do in Kansas. And... Um, this is where the election of 1860 is won. This is where Lincoln is elected, one might almost say. Lincoln did not have to win a single new vote for the Republican Party. What he had to do was hold the vote of 1858. Now, not everybody could do that necessarily, and Lincoln, as we'll see, turns out to be a very strategic candidate, but the real shift of political power within the North to the Republicans being the dominant party everywhere in every state in the North takes place in 18, uh, 1858. Um, now, you might say, hey, looking at those elections, if you're a Democrat, if you're part of the Buchanan administration, the one thing that is essential is to reunite the Democratic Party. But that's not what they do. Immediately, the vendetta against the vendetta against Douglas continues. When the next session of Congress meets, Douglas is stripped of his position as chairman of the Senate Committee on the Territories, just a kind of retribution by the administration. Uh, in fact, in, the, in Douglas's election campaign against Lincoln, as we'll see, the administration actually supported Lincoln. The Buchanan administration tried to get conservative Democrats, to vote, Democrats who supported the Lecompton to go and vote for Lincoln in order to destroy Douglas. So the Democratic Party is riven here, and it will be very difficult to, um, 
to put it back together.